Nissan has some very big plans for 2028 when it comes to the Nissan GTR. They are in fact canceling the R35 after 17 years in production. It's just insane to think about how long this has been in production. But it's not like they want to cancel the R35. It's just that they sort of have to. So we're going to have a look at this article from CarScoop. Um, and have a look at the reasoning why they're actually canceling the the GTR and also check out the hyper what's it called the Nissan hyper force concept from 2023 which is a clear indication of what the next GTR will look like and I am not so sure about that design we're gonna have a look at that in Photoshop both articles here from CarScoop linked down in the description so Nissan wouldn't mind selling the R35 GTR for another 17 years that would be pretty cool and very unique in the car industry for a car to be sold for this long and then continue on to almost 35 years of uh, you know being on the market and it is selling pretty well still even though it's an ancient design now by modern standards Nissan executive Pierre Loing says that the automaker was effectively forced to end the production of the R35 due to regulations he also admits that defining uh, a next-gen GTR for the electrified car market, market is challenging. And I can definitely see that. Because the GTR, I mean, can you imagine if it was full electric, like a full EV? I think they would just lose a lot of what the people love about the GTR. So that is a huge challenge. A replacement appears to be on the table for 2028 with solid-state batteries playing a key role. Uh, doesn't have anything to take over for the 2025-2026 model year now when the GTR is dead after 2024. Global product chief uh, Loing here is providing details on why that is when the next... R36 GTR might arrive and what it, what's taking so long. The R35 is the first GTR to ever come over here to the United States as a new model. And for the, for the past 17 years, it's represented a unique corner of the supercar market. It doesn't really look like a you know like a mid-engine supercar but it does have the performance of one and that is what i love about this design it doesn't even look very aerodynamic if you just look at the you know the, the shapes and the proportions of this car but it is a proper performance vehicle obviously so it's still on sale for the moment it's been on sale for 17 years and we love to make it for another 17 years but the regulators gives us some trouble now discussing Nissan's plans for the period between now and whenever the R36 arrives uh, Loing said of course I'd love to have something to fill the gap here but if you look at the history of the GTR badge they've had huge gaps before when they weren't a GTR on the market for example, the uh, the GTR concept in 2001 ended the R34 Skyline GTR production in 2002. And then you had the uh, R35 that came out, what is it, six or five years later in 2007. So gaps is definitely something we've seen in the GTR lineup before. You also had the uh, Skyline GTR ending in 1975 and the R32 starting in 1989. And that is a massive gap. 13 years there uh, or 14 almost before we saw a new GTR the GTR is strong enough to live with these gaps in its production and we need to have gaps because going into the electrified world here there's a lot of debate about what a GTR in an era of electrification and that is a very very good question and Nissan don't have the answer for that yet however we saw the uh, the hyperforce concept last year and that definitely gives you know GTR vibes when you look at the graphics and also the the proportions of this if you just strip it down to the base proportions it definitely looks like a GTR uh, but it sounds like Nissan isn't 100% sold on the EV only powertrain. Again, I can definitely see why. They, I think they're, they, I think they're thinking: uh, Is EVs really the way to go with a GTR? The 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 customers that buy the GTR, will they really buy an electrified version of this uh, uh, high performance sports car or almost supercar? That is a good question. Do you want to put in a lot of millions of dollars into developing this? new GTR and then have nobody buy it. That is a huge risk to take. So we are on par, he says, to do our first prototype solid state battery by spring of 2025. We'll have a proto prototype vehicle two years later using real batteries 
And then eventually by 2028, we, we want a vehicle uh, which we will sell, uh, probably in small numbers and starting in Japan only to begin with. We are currently on time for this, so the time schedule here seems to be on point. I think it will work in solid state technology, solves a lot of problems of EV batteries such as density, heat, etc. Those vehicles with 150 to 200 kilowatt hour batteries. It's a nonsense. The weight, the cost, the big wheels and tires, the brake that they need. Solid state uh, helps us break that cycle is what Nissan saying themselves. So finding a way to build an electric car that weighs no more than a comparable internal combustion uh, vehicle would be helpful and impressive, specifically when we're talking about a high performance car like the Nissan GTR. Now we just have to wait and see if Nissan can actually pull this off. So let's have quickly have a look here at the uh, the concept that was unwa uh, unveiled last year in 2023 and what this is all about. So this is the design here. It looks very aggressive and uh, the proportions, the styling for the front end, if you want a front lip, I mean, this is one heck of a front lip uh, down here. So it has 1,341 horsepower Nissan Hyperforce dives into the GTR's electric future. And let me ask you, would you buy this? If it looked like this, the next GTR, the R36, when it came out like this, fully electrified, I, I personally would not. I would just go for a uh, used 2010 or 2011, something like that, and uh, just have fun with that. So a whole lot of GTR DNA, although the company playfully refrains from directly mentioning it, but you can see it everywhere. Even the pixelated logo here in the front end is clearly a GTR logo. And the concept features Nissan's E-Force all-wheel drive uh, control technology, lightweight construction, and a solid-state battery as well. And this concept intends to appeal to racing enthusiasts and gamers alike. You have a lightweight carbon fiber construction, including carbon fiber wheels. It even features a pair of modes, drive modes here, GT and Grand Touring. You also have R for racing. Now, Nissan president and CEO here says that the concept that was unveiled in 2023 are symbols of the future and embody our founding spirit of daring to do what others don't now <laughs> uh, as I said I mean they really go out on a limb here and I have to say they're very brave if they are actually considering uh, making the R36 completely electric I think that is an absolutely massive risk but if they can pull it off and if they can actually move these uh, units as EVs um, I would be uh, very very impressed so this concept also includes active aero in the form of canards, a front lip, a rear spoiler, and fender vents. Nissan even boasts a newly developed plasma actuator that suppresses air detachment to minimize inner wheel lift during cornering. And I mean, these technologies here would be very, very cool. It sounds like these are type of stuff that you would see in an R36 uh, GTR this type of technology now you have the interior here and the, the 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 easiest way to tell if a car is production ready or not if you look at them right now is to just have a look at the interior and this interior here clearly far away from production ready it's a crazy looking interior an adaptive infotainment display it looks like it's straight out of the video game developed in partnership in fact with Gran Turismo develop, uh, developer and in R mode the hyperforce brightens up the cabin with red ambient light and the panels on the dash extend towards the driver so very very futuristic design here now while Nissan isn't saying anything about this being the future design language of the next GTR they're also not not saying that so this could very well be what very close ex at least for the exterior design to what the new gtr looks like and i'm gonna let you know what i think about this design when we jump into photoshop in just a minute here uh the company did acknowledge that the design pays homage to nissan's high performance cars of the past so with that said let's jump in here let's have a look at this hyper force concept and what this is all about now for me this is definitely not in uh, you know a, 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 in my opinion a traditional automotive design because it has a lot of just very strange creases and curvatures to it for example the front end we talked about this front lip i mean it's just insane how big this lip is in the front end it looks crazy to have 
all these chamfers here, these lines, it looks almost like an origami design. It looks like paper that's been folded in several different ways to create this uh, this design overall. And I don't like I'm not I don't like how this sticks out too far and how these corners are the farthest points in the front end and then almost go into a concave uh, area right here at the lower section. The headlights I, I I guess the headlight would sit right here. We have the daytime lines being a very very thin LED right here going from one corner to the other we have some uh, active arrow here i'm not sure if these are the active arrows that's supposed to reduce the lift for the front axle maybe these open up or something like that carbon fiber wheels here as well i mean it just looks insane it doesn't look like a i don't know it just almost doesn't look like a car anymore it just looks like something else Looking at the side view here, you clearly have the GTR roof line because we have this sharp corner up top, which is typical for GTRs. And it also looks a little bit like the new Supra with this line right here, a curvature up here with a straight line going down into the greenhouse and the window here. But this area here, this is where you can clearly see that this is uh, very much inspired by previous GTRs. And it looks almost reminds me a little bit of Mazda's design language to have this Kodo design language, which means just uh, have, have uh, play around with empty surfaces and add a couple of sharp lines into the bodywork. You can see that we sort of have that sort of styling here. Razor sharp angles everywhere on this design. Look at the front end here, how this front end sticks out. And these are the corners that we talked about here that are the farthest point in the front end sticking out that way. And super flat in the bottom as well. We don't have any sort of side skirts or anything like that. We do have a diffuser back here in the rear and massive wing as well. If, if they're putting something like this into production, they're definitely going to have to work a lot uh, to be able to make this, you know, a production car. Because as it looks right now, it just looks totally nuts to me. This is by far my favorite view for the new um, uh, concept that we've seen here. Uh, we clear uh, GTR taillights here. These have this 3D effect. Look like they go into the body. I do like the design of the taillights here. And also this line is very GTR-ish as well, in addition to the big diffuser here. You can see that the diffuser sits separated from the rest of the body. So there's a huge sort of uh, cave going on right here in between the diffuser and the body. We have Nissan in integrated backlit here with the Nissan logo. Looks pretty cool. I do like the wing design as well. And the rear end to me looks just so much better than the front end with this big scoop plow thing that we have going on there. This is also a typical GTR feel over the rear axle having this big panel going down here. Super sharp line in the front end. You can see that the uh, active arrow is open in this area. While in the front end, you can see that they are closed up there. You have this line fading in to the door here. And the door, uh, uh, this is another reason we can see this is just a purely concept design. This door goes all the way up here. So I think, I don't know, it's, it's a massive door here. And it goes all the way up to the roof roof line almost so this would be uh, very very difficult and very very expensive to put this type of styling into production so as i said a lot of changes need to be done and not just in the exterior obviously we also have this crazy crazy looking interior with this gamified uh, situation that we have going on here i don't know how you're supposed to see the road at night with all these LEDs just alive, just blinding you when you're sitting in there. You can't see what's going on outside because you have so many LEDs in the interior. And this is, I, I don't like this interior. I mean, it's, it's a study in what they can do when it comes to concept cars. But this, I mean, you would bruise yourself and get, you know, start bleeding, cut yourself when you drive this car because this interior has so many sharp corners everywhere this is you know gonna mess up your knees when you're driving and this is gonna mess up your elbows there's no real armrest in here there's just a lot of leds and screens and the steering wheel doesn't look uh, anywhere near production ready either but you know as an idea uh to to have this type of design for for the new gtr I think I think Nissan has a lot to to work on here, not just when it comes to the exterior design, but I think more importantly, 
the idea, the, the spirit, what is the soul of the next R36 going to be? Are they going to go full EV or are they still going to have some sort of uh, hybrid, maybe plug-in hybrid, I think would be maybe a good idea, but they say they don't want to add weight to the car. So that is another challenge that they're going to have to go through. I, I wish companies would have, you know, regular cars, everyday cars going from A to B, commuting back and forth to work. They can all be EVs or whatever you want. But when you have special cars like this, like the GTR is a very, very special car in Nissan's lineup. I wish they would just uh, be allowed to have that still be an internal combustion engine just a regular good old sports high performance car which is very hard to do when you have you know electrification only as the powertrain so i think i, I hope that would be some sort of uh, regulation or rule moving forward that when you have specific models like this that are very important that has a clear history going back decades that they have some sort of leeway when it comes to adding you know keeping those internal combustion um, power but overall we have so it's a, exciting times now in the in the auto industry i think a lot of companies are just confused they just are we gonna keep making evs that nobody's gonna buy when we don't have the infra infrastructure yet and you know sales for evs are dropping pretty heavily the last couple of years we still want to keep you know pushing money into this uh, th this concept or do we go back and create more hybrids and plug-in hybrids that people will actually buy there's a lot of challenges for a lot of uh, car companies right now and i'm very excited to see what direction nissan is actually going to take with the new r36